coming in the oh, last few years than it's ever been because a lot of surgeons are becoming anterior segment and posterior segment surgeons to some level at least so let's go through with this process if you do see a communication between the anterior and posterior segment uh, something like in these cases of a coloboma or uh, in case of acus misdirection there's always some form of communication there uh, in these scenarios you really have to wonder that on a 2d or on a slit lamp they basically looks very elegant and nice but the minute you start doing cataract surgery on these patients they do tend to behave very differently and let me define the problem a little bit more when you go in with a phaco probe you're also uh, pushing in BSS or saline. Now this BSS or saline goes into the vitreous cavity through that gape and starts swelling up the vitreous body that thereby basically reducing my anterior chamber depth and that anterior chamber depth shallowing causes a lot of problems whether it be cornea or PC. Now let's take this in real time. This is a very simple small coloboma which basically could have been handled without any issues uh, but uh, watch me. Uh, I'm basically doing a simple rexis I'm doing a hydro dissection. At this point, it's absolutely fine. The amount of BSS applied inside is not too much. And you're able to, uh, you know, look at the depth of uh, anterior chamber you get as soon as you push in that viscoelastic. And as you prolong three minutes, four minutes into the uh, phaco emulsification, this being a small pupil, you might probably have to be there for a little bit longer. Uh, in these scenarios, you really have to wonder uh, at end of this phaco emulsification, I'm worried that, you know, look at this, the viscoelastic that I'm pushing in is not going into the eye, rather it is blobbing outside. And this is a very clear sign that there is an issue that is posterior segment based, not capsule or iris hook based, which is what happens once we see this, a lot of surgeons across the world, they start pushing in a more viscoelastic, which causes more tension, or they push in some iris hooks, or they put in capsule tension rings, all three of which will not help the scenario because the scenario is bundled with an issue of posterior segment swelling of vitreous body. Now, uh, the proposal which I have started and I'm going to show here is basically I'm pushing in a trocar into the pre-placing a trocar and then starting my phaco emulsification. So when I do have my BSS inside going in and swelling that vitreous body, I can, and my anterior chamber starts becoming shallower and shallower. Now I do always have the option of just going inside, doing a simple dry vitrectomy for seven to eight seconds at 1500 cut rate. And that's about it. And once I'm done with that, I can easily go inside and emulsify the rest of the pieces. And believe me, I can do this intermittently, which basically allows me the freedom and the space that I need, look at this, the same case, all I did was pre-place a trocar and go in with a dry vitrectomy, completed my phaco emulsification safely and soundly. Uh, please make sure not to vitrectomize too much because just seven to eight seconds does enough vitrectomy to kind of give you that space. You can intermittently do it as and when required. Each time you do it, the seconds should reduce time and again. And watch me, I, I can keep doing this intermittently till I am through with all my nucleus, epinucleus and cortical removal. Even if I have this issue when I'm doing my IOL injection, like watch this over here, my intraocular lens now when it's going in, will have. I'm doing this just before my intraocular lens is being placed so that I have good deep chambers at this point of time. Now, mind you, in most cases, I don't do this so often. Now. Apart from that, once my lens is in place, I also, in these colobomatous cases, do close this iris defect with a single pass four through pupiloplasty, thereby giving me a really round, nice pupil. Now, watch, I'm basically passing the suture single pass from one side to the pressure from behind. Intumescent cataracts also have been tremendously helped with this. So, three cataract me. Uh, so here's here's one of some of the risks when I was chewing uh, with the, this thing and I already had a uh, rupture and basically the hey, rupture didn't it's extend. It's so the idea over here was there was a, uh, you sometimes feel that you can only push in a lens even though that uh, anterior margin is extended. 
but in this scenario i was not so lucky i really had to you know i saw some vitreous come out because the extension just went hmm? ripped all the way through the posterior segment and so in these cases uh, i had to switch over this to a glued intraocular lens which is not a problem because i always use a three piece lens in these cases uh, and hence it was easier i did put an iris hook at the end of the haptic if you see here so that the haptic does not go falling inside i do a complete anti the vitrectomy uh, once my anti the vitrectomy is done i basically do a handshake technique to grab the tip of that haptic once the tip of the haptic is grabbed i can easily externalize both my haptics both my haptics are externalized i remove all the iris hooks make sure there is no vitreous in the anterior segment and now tuck my uh, haptics into the gebal shariat tunnel and thereby stabilizing my intraocular lens close intraocular lens you might have issues and this is the post op day one of the same patient uh, now sometimes what happens is you want to be using uh, capsular hooks why should you use capsular hooks in the, when the coloboma is large when the coloboma is large you sometimes have this issue and i want to show you this because this is a uh, vap that is vitrectomy assisted phaco going wrong and i think uh, i learned a lot from this video myself uh, not just the video the case itself uh, so here i'm putting my iris hooks in place i'm putting my iris hooks in place to ensure uh, probably in hindsight i might not have done that probably waited for the phaco to kind of here is trying to go down not happy with this i'm trying to manipulate and bring this nucleus into the anterior chamber remove the iris hooks and then try and complete my phaco emulsification uh, which is what i'm trying here put some viscoelastic in that side but still it was completely trying to go south and in these scenarios uh, all i can say is think that this uh, nucleus comes out in one piece and once this is done i'm pretty much uh, safe that the nucleus is not going to fall down i put my iris hooks back in place uh, completely remove all the cortex uh, remove uh, iris hooks being placing these three piece lenses because it can happen that the haptic one haptic or all the cortical matter is removed make sure that you do your single how do i deal with it this is also called vitrectomy assisted phaco emulsification i have published this before here are some of the advantages of vitrectomy assisted uh, phaco emulsification and uh, just for your better viewing thank you very much here on my youtube and instagram you can follow me ask me questions any of that